I ended up being at a place in the summer of 2021, I ended up being in a place where I actually doubted God, like whether he was even real or not. I even told God, I don't believe in you. I said it, I, I don't believe in God. Um, and this was only like like short times, you know, this wasn't for like months or weeks, but it was, you know, I was definitely going through waves of being confused and then being, you know, just, just believing in God and then, you know, and I've gone through these phases and you know, maybe I'm not even done going through these, but it's, I, I believe I am because I've been walking in the spirit more. I've been more rooted in God nowadays. But regardless, um, I ended up doubting my faith like that. And after the peaks of me doubting God, I realized that emotionally I didn't believe in God. I realized that logically I didn't believe in God. And I realized that even in my soul, I didn't believe in God. Now, some of you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Okay, the heart, okay, the emotions, the heart submits to the mind, the mind submits to the soul, and the soul submits to the spirit, right? So in all these three places, heart, mind, and soul, I literally was like, I don't know if God's real. I don't really believe in him. I don't know about all of this. But then after even saying these things that I did, I realized there was a deeper root in my spirit. And I believe it's in the core of my being that um, resided in me was my faith in God. And my faith went deeper. It went deeper than my emotions. It went deeper than my logic. It even went deeper than necessarily where my soul was or what it was going through. And what I realized is even though I said things like, God, I don't believe in you or I don't believe in God and stuff, I still ended up like when I when I cleared everything away and stopped thinking and stopped trying to process emotions and just I ended up just literally saying, hey, God, I love you. I, I, I love you. I just started worshiping him and just just communing with him. It was just such a weird place to be, you know, because it's like, here is this God I'm, I don't believe in, but yet I, I love him and I'm worshiping him and I'm talking with him and his presence is still near to me. and. You know, it showed me that my faith is so much deeper than what mankind understands about the human being. We only understand emotions and logic. We barely understand anything invisible. You know, now I actually have go going through it. I'm happy to know that my root of faith is deeper than logic. You know, I've had logic beat down on me and a lot of Christians have logic beat down on them and you got to believe this doctrine. You you have to think this way. You have to be a Calvinist. How can you be an Arminian? You know, these these people with, with their man-made doctrines, you know, which I believe are actually there's godly revelations for people individually speaking, but I know personally in my own walk with God that because I have my own walk with God, I have my own experience, I have my own calling, I have my own mind, my own heart, my own so, you know, I will disagree with every Christian on something in regards to my walk with God and biblical doctrine and, and all of that. I do. Every single Christian I see, I disagree with all of them on something, and I think that's normal. So yeah, I think I'm getting off track. I got away earlier this year from the spiritual gifts because I really felt like I was a Pharisee, and I really believe that, you know, if there was anything prophetic for me to even talk about of last year, I noticed that everyone everywhere was studying the book of John and it was almost like there was this re acknowledgement of the simple gospel of Jesus Christ like corporately speaking like I saw all these people just going back to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ well that was for me as well and I really believe that you know I I founded my faith on how good I was doing or you know am I walking in the spirit am I am I am I leading a ministry am I seeing in the prophetic am I seeing miracles happen and those are good things but those are outcomes of your already saved self you know and then on top of that I saw that you can still end world hunger and yet be a Pharisee and so like you know I'm, I'm like downloading all of this and you know I was I was really feeling like like a Matthew 7 and um, just a word Jesus said, you know, to those people that said, Lord, Lord, you know, didn't I prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform all sorts of miraculous works in your name? And Jesus will say, I'll, I never knew you. Depart from me, yea, you practice lawlessness. I don't want to say I was one of those people, but I believe that a lot of, you know, my worth came into how much I was doing in the supernatural or in ministry or in, you know, works. And so I just got rid of like all of that, especially like the gifts of the spirit, but just like a lot of things. And I went just to like, I'm going to do nothing and I'm saved because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's it. Basically guys, 
I, I shared the most main thing I wanted to share, and the most main thing I wanted to share is that what happened to me specifically in this year is that, yeah, I did doubt my faith, but in going through that deconstruction process, I saw that I was religious in some ways. And I saw that, I saw that, you know, my faith is rooted in the gospel, and my faith specifically, my specific faith in believing in God is rooted in my born-again experience. And no matter what happened, no matter what I've seen, there's just something about that time when I was four years old and I gave my life to Jesus and he revealed himself to me. And so right here, I just also want to ask you, what is your faith rooted in? What is the root of your belief in Jesus Christ? What is the root of you following God and, and, and reading the Bible and, and adding to the kingdom? What is your root of faith? Now that I've had everything that happened to me and I've had a lot of things happen to me, like I talked about, you know, going through crises and battling mental illness and doubting my faith and all those kinds of things. Now I'm getting back into some of the places where I am and I'm saying this and I, and I declare this publicly in the name of Jesus. I am stepping back into like spiritual warfare and hearing the voice of God and you know the the idea that when he speaks I will speak. And I know a lot of you guys say that I'm like you know I'm not saved because I have a nose ring or whatever. You know, I got long hair you know and I'm, I'm a guy. I didn't make a Nazarite vow but you know I still have long hair. Oh, also like uh, this uh, this is Native American so it's pretty probably you know I'm probably going to hell for that too I, I don't know this is all, all this is this shirts also a uh, mixed fabric it was given to me by a Christian who does a ministry about that's actually pro-life for all you you know um, honestly guys my conviction is deeper my conviction is so much deeper the last revelation I recently have I'm gonna end this video with this but the last revelation I had last revelation I had where Jesus talks about he talks to the Pharisees and you know it's like woe to you for you, the outside of your cup is clean but the inside is filthy he talks about how you know the work of God in our lives cleans first the inside of the cup and then resulting in the outside of the cup also being clean and you know, in trying to seek repentance and holiness and not sinning as I, I fall so shortly, but I, I, I finally am seeing that a clean cup in the inside of it means to have a joy and a peace and a love and a patience and a kindness and those little childlike emotions, right? We work and add to the kingdom in that spirit. And that's what it means to have a clean cup in the inside resulting for the outside of the cup to be clean. After years and years of knowing that passage, it really, really spoke to me on a deeper wavelength, like a parallel, like a deeper onion layer on what that really looks like and how God transforms us first. Because so many people are purely fear-based to where there's no joy in serving God. There's no rest, there's no comfort in the comforter. And it's such a divine lie to be tormented serving Jesus. The reality of Jesus is that even if we are tormented, we can still find rest and peace for our souls in him. You know, a lot of people say that Christianity is not about being happy, and you're completely right. It's not about being happy. It's about being happy anyways, duh. I think that's where I'm going to end all of this. That was my last revelation. To recap, I doubted my faith, saw that I was a Pharisee, saw that I had dryness in me, saw that my root of faith is actually deeper, and now I'm stepping back into the richness and the glory of God. And my last statement is truly, if you are truly receiving the gospel of truth of Jesus Christ in your heart, it's going to be a supernatural living and breathing word inside of you. So I conclude with that. Yeah, that's where I've been and this is where I'm going. Thank you. If you've actually listened to this whole video, thank you. Please hit the like button and please tell me like like the things I talked about in this video. Just, just make a comment. Make a comment. And uh, yeah, if you're controversial, oh well, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, bye. I'll see you next time. I actually am scheduled up until May 4th with some videos and I'm going to do more. I was going to do music today, but I'm not. I just really wanted to do a talking video. <sighs> we'll see what happens. Uh, thank you guys. God loves you. Bye bye.